In this video, we're gonna count down the top six rules for swing. And the goal is for you to not only grasp the concept, but be able to replicate it in your own playing. Hey, it's Paul Toby here from jazzmental.com. Thanks for joining me for another one of my tutorials. Swing, that ever elusive feel thing that musicians need to learn and understand before you can play great jazz. In the last few live stream masterclasses that we've done, we've had this question, Paul, how is it that you swing the way you do? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. Let's dive in and get started with rule number six. You're looking for feel and that feel can only be found in beats two and four. Let's listen together to this example and what I'm going to do is clap my hands on two and four. That's where you should be feeling the beat. Now, it's uncommon for most people to do that. In fact, most people would be clapping on one and three. But if you do that, it's going to turn the swing around on you and it will never sound authentic. I'm displaying the sheet music now called Piano Swing Drills. I think you get where this is going. We're actually going to be able to practice this at home. Later on, I'm gonna put a link to this sheet music and the backing track that you just heard so that you can play along with it. This sheet music is displayed here for rule number five. Yes, we're counting down to number one. And when we get to number one, I will be putting a link to download the sheet music and the backing track. Rule number five is swing eighths cannot be notated any other way than just by writing eighth notes. A lot of people look at swing and they try to divide the eighth notes up and they write things like this, dotted eighth note with a 16th note. If you do that, you're gonna get a sound like this. That's not the sound that we're looking for. So the only way to notate it really is with just straight eighths. But even though you notate it with eighth notes, this note is longer than this note. So long, then short. The sound you're looking for is something like this. That's more of a swing sound. And you'll notice in the sheet music that all of our eighth notes are written straight. They're played swing, but they're written straight. Okay, now we're down to rule number four. The accents are on the end of the beat. That is the thing that's gonna give you the most authentic swing feel possible. So take a look at the example on your page. We've got eighth notes that go up this scale, and I'll talk about that scale in just a minute when we get to the drill. If we were to accent the end of the beat and really accentuate it, I mean a little over the top, it would sound like this. That is the real essence of swing. Let's play a little bit faster now. Okay, now you're starting to get that true swing authentic feel. Okay, moving on to number three. Drummers can really help with feel. When drummers play, you should really listen to them because what they're doing is they are playing a quarter note and then two eighth notes with the accent being on the second eighth note. And yes, the first one is long, the second one is short. They're playing something like this, with either a ride cymbal on a hi-hat or even with brushes on a drum, like this. Okay, let's go and listen to that and only focus on what the drummer is doing. See if you can hear what he's doing. And in this particular case, he's playing with brushes, not with sticks. Hear that on the snare drum? Okay, so you'll notice that the first eighth note is a lot quieter than the second eighth note. That's what I mean by accenting the end of the beat. 
Okay, rule number two, practice drills is the only way to perfect this skill. And fortunately, I've written out some practice drills that are really gonna help you. There's three of them, and I've done them in three different keys. Key of C, key of B flat, and key of A flat. Flat keys are quite common in jazz. Let's take a look at the first one. In the left hand, what you wanna do is you wanna accent the and of four and the and of two. So you'll notice that we're starting right off the bat here with the and of four, and then the and of two, then the and of four, etc. One, two, three, four. Now the good news is, is that I've also written voicings that are pretty common in jazz. The first voicing is like a D minor nine, then a G7 13, and then a C major seven with a nine and 13. Then in the right hand, we're gonna use what's called a bebop scale. It's an eight note scale that adds a passing note. In this particular case, on the D minor, it'll be the major third, major third. Then when it gets to the G7 chord, it's still the same passing note, except it's gonna be the major seventh of G7. So G7 with the major seven as the passing note. So let's play the scale. And then it switches to B flat major. So we're going from C major to B flat. First chord is C minor seven. The reason why I'm giving you these scales is because they're commonly used scales in jazz soloing. Then it goes on to do the same thing in A flat. The next exercise is the same, except when we get to the major seventh chord, we're gonna to continue to solo by using enclosures. So we're starting off the same. When we get to the C major seventh chord, we're gonna play an enclosure on C. If you don't know what enclosures are, you can find other tutorials on this channel about enclosures, but we're basically using destination notes and surrounding them. So if the destination note is a chord tone, first one is C, the next one is G, and the next one is D, okay? That's a pretty common thing in jazz to use those types of enclosures. Then I do the same thing in B flat, the same thing in A flat. Then the final drill does something a little bit different. Let's analyze it. The first one is spell the chord. Then we're coming down the bebop scale. Then once we get to the bottom of the bebop scale, we're gonna play another chord. And then at the end, we're gonna use the famous bebop on the sixth and going to the fifth. Bebop. Let's play it. Hear that? Bebop. Bebop. Let's play this exercise on the grand piano. I recorded it a little bit earlier just so we could save a bit of time. And let's play all of these exercises together and you can follow along the sheet music. Going to B flat. Now A flat. Now let's go back to C and play the second exercise. to see for the third exercise. Bebop. Now 
That's an exercise that you can play over and over again using the backing track. I'll give you that link just momentarily. I did want to say a little bit about the exercise in that, as you can see, it is written in eighth notes, but you could hear that I'm playing swing along with the bass and drums. And that left hand is constantly anticipating the next beat, which really helps you with your swing. That left hand is doing what's called comping. So again, number two is practice drills can really help you internalize the feel. And that brings us to the number one rule of swing. Now this is more of a mental thing than it is a physical thing. And that rule is some people take years to develop a good sense of swing. And again, like I said, you may not like that, but some people it does. And some people can grasp it fairly quickly. But what I can tell you is that the practice drills will really help you. And it's neither hard nor easy. It's just unfamiliar. So making it more familiar means going over the exercise that I'm going to give you and doing it again and again until you start to really internalize the feel. Some people never get swing. And the reason why they never get it is because they don't practice it. So I'm giving you every opportunity to dive in and get started. Let me post a link to the sheet music that I've written out and the backing track that I made. I'm going to put that up here in the corner. It's your opportunity to download that and get started today. And while you're going to download that, if you could just reach down and hit the little thumbs up button, it really helps us here on the channel. And if you want to subscribe, we'd love to have you. And if you're just in the early stages of jazz and you're trying to pick it up, let me post a link to a video that I think is really going to help you. I'm going to put that link right here.